There are many kinds of academic dishonesty a student or scholar can commit. Each one can create a lot of trouble for the person who commits them, not to mention sometimes affecting others around them. Plagiarism is the most common. As you'll see later, plagiarism is presenting someone else's words or ideas as if they were your own. Fabricating or making up data or references is another common kind of academic dishonesty, involving inventing things that don't exist to avoid doing the hard work of scholarship. It's also wrong to buy, steal, sell, give away, or even lend someone a paper or a test. If someone asks you for a previous paper or test, don't give it to them. You can get in trouble for that yourself. If they really just want to see how an assignment is done, tell them to ask the teacher about getting samples. Don't let them get you in trouble. Submitting a paper, either the whole paper or a substantial portion of it, to more than one professor or for more than one class is considered dishonest too. That means that you're only learning half as much as you were originally supposed to. If you're doing a similar topic, in two classes, ask both professors how you might make the most of the paper. Discuss it with both professors in advance, clearly letting them know what portions you might use over. Or, you might ask if you can turn in one much longer paper that's sufficient for two classes worth of work. Abusing academic materials or sabotaging equipment is dishonest too. It hurts the ability of other students and professors to learn, to teach, and to do research. You can also get in trouble by impersonating someone else, like sitting in on a class or taking an exam for them. Same goes for suggesting you have credentials or degrees that you don't have. Then there's the old dog ate my homework routine. Lying to your professor to get more time is just wrong. Of course, professors can do the wrong thing too. Falsifying a student grade, punishing students with grades, and so on are forms of dishonesty that hurt everyone. Again, plagiarism is one of the most common forms of academic dishonesty. It's easy to do in this modern age of copying and pasting from the internet. Unfortunately for those who plagiarize though, it's also easier than ever to catch plagiarism. Defined simply, plagiarism is using someone else's ideas or words without giving the original author credit or presenting it as if it were yours. Pay special attention to the notion ideas or words. That's an important combination. It's not just stealing someone's words, which is bad in itself. It's also plagiarism when you take someone else's ideas as if they were yours. Whether you got the idea or the words from someone else, always cited in your paper. Ask your professor what style of citations she or he wants you to use. You should also keep in mind, intent does not matter. If you get caught plagiarizing, your professors won't be able to know what you were thinking, only what you did. If your assignment is plagiarized, intentionally or not, you will have to face the consequences. That's why it's important you learn what plagiarism is and how to avoid it. Here's an example to give you an idea of how plagiarism often occurs. Here's a passage. Researchers have asked whether more male teachers are actually needed, why so few males pursue teaching careers, what the gendered nature of childcare work is, what the barriers and challenges are for males, and what can be done to encourage and recruit more high-quality males into the profession. Now here's one way that a student might use this original passage in a paper. Suppose you just changed a few words around so you weren't copying it exactly. Some people mistakenly believe that if you change the text at all, then it's not plagiarism. That is not the case. For example, say you took out asked 
and replaced it with questioned. You replaced actually with even, changed males for men, swapped the places of barriers and challenges, and then you substituted the profession for teaching. That sounds pretty good, but that is plagiarism. The idea has been stolen. This passage also steals the sentence structure and most of the words. Changing a few words doesn't prevent plagiarism. Okay, so what about this? We'll just write it a different way with all new words. We'll write it as, Scholars have researched questions about whether more males are needed in teaching at all, why males don't go into teaching, whether working with children is gendered, what problems men face, and how more men can be encouraged to teach. Is that passage used correctly? Nope. That's still plagiarism. The passage still steals the idea. And unless you've read all those same references, you are dishonestly citing them. You've also still stolen the sentence structures, including having the same items in the list of research topics in basically the same order. If it's someone else's idea that you're borrowing, you have to cite it. So how about this? We'll take the sentence you paraphrased, that is, put in your own words, and make some revisions. First, let's put a citation to the original author. In this case, we'll format the citation in APA style. Other styles like MLA or Chicago might require something different. And, to avoid dishonestly suggesting that you've read all those references at the end, we'll just cross those out. Does that get you out of charges of academic dishonesty? Yes. That provision is good. You've made clear that the idea was someone else's, you've given that person credit, and you've avoided misrepresenting that you've read the references. There are other ways to commit plagiarism, and I can't show them all to you, but just make sure you're citing any idea or words that aren't yours. The one exception for having to cite everything that didn't come straight out of your head is what we call the common knowledge exception. If something is widely known and no one disputes it as a fact, you don't have to cite a source for an idea. This includes things like George Washington was the first president of the United States, Canberra is the capital of Australia, and pi equals 3.14. There are lots of other things that fall under common knowledge, but again, the test is if something's widely known and no one disputes it as a fact. You can find lots of resources online if you'd like to know more about what constitutes plagiarism and how to get around it. I recommend the really great advice at plagiarism.org. When in doubt, though, just ask your instructor for advice. Learning about academic dishonesty is important because there are lots of bad outcomes for academic dishonesty. Depending on how serious the type and extent of academic dishonesty, you could fail the assignment you cheated on, fail the whole class, get kicked out of school, or even lose a job. There might even be some things you could do that would get you fined, sued, or even arrested. Don't let that be you. Avoid plagiarism and all the other forms of academic dishonesty, even if you have to turn in an assignment late. It's much easier to do your own work, and thus do your own learning. After all, cheating on papers isn't really an issue of getting one over on your professor. It's actually cheating yourself out of an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm.